things. Three things that Tulsi should do to help her campaign out for president, right? Okay. So number one, I said Tulsi needs to state loud and clear, fam. And I know I'm, I'm a broken record, but she has to say sanctions are an act of war and we need to lift them immediately. Okay? Fam, there has been some comparisons in the mainstream <coughs> media. Sorry. Fiorella. <laughs> there have been some comparisons in the mainstream media. Um, mainly the other day we went to Bill Maher. Uh, mm -hmm. Johnny and our, our friends. Let's go take a look at the YouTube video first and take a look at it. Uh, it's the very first video from 637 to 812. Now look at the comparison that Bill Maher makes. And a lot of people in the mainstream are going to make this comparison. And be like, no, Trump's a non-interventionist. Go ahead. Fairly similar to Trump is you're a non-interventionist. Yeah. I mean, you see this with Iran lately. He's he's kind of torn. You know, part of him, of course, always wants to strike back. Yeah. Uh, but he has kind of staked his claim, foreign affairs-wise, on being the guy who does not want us to get into more wars, more regime regime change wars. Yeah. You're on that same page. He talked a lot about that in his 2016 yeah. campaign. Uh, but through his administration and through his presidency, we've seen something very different. I think that's why a lot of folks who voted for him are, they feel very betrayed. Uh, why? What wars Iran. has he got his You, you mentioned Iran. He yeah. says he doesn't want to go to war with Iran. But if you look at the actions that he and his administration have taken, and maybe he's not aware of it, maybe these guys are doing it on their own, John Bolton, yeah. Mike Pompeo, and others, but every single decision that they have made towards Iran is laying the groundwork for an yeah. eventual war. But we're not there yet. And he could have done it last week when they shot down the drone. And he said something which I think if Obama had said it, we would have liked, which was, hey, we don't know who, who made that order. That's what Kennedy said in the yeah. Cuban no, Missile no, Crisis. That's right. If, Let's if, not be if rash. If really doesn't want to go to war with Iran, he's got to swallow his pride and get back into the Iran nuclear deal. Swallow his pride? That's not going to happen. No, because if, if he doesn't, I mean, if he okay. doesn't, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo yeah. and others, I mean, they have, they have literally laid the dynamite and I lit know, the fuse. I know, but one thing about him, he's the boss. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care what other All right. people say. Okay. I, I disagree with that. Okay. <laughs> no, we, we do disagree Entirely. with that. But once again, it's that, yeah. th listen, she has to separate herself on oh, this absolutely. thing. Oh, absolutely. Okay? And the best way to do it is to say, no, sanctions are an act of war. Right. I would not have sanctions. Sanctions kill people. Sanctions kill the poor. Sanctions disproportionately kill people of color. And we need to lift the sanctions now, specifically in, in Venezuela. And we need we never needed to put them back on the table in Iran. It's an act of war. And here's another thing. If you... There was an, a political analyst. Uh, is it my video or you want to go for the YouTube one you have? We can do even Mike Gravel. I, Mike Gravel is the third video from 825. Listen to what Mike Gravel says, fam. E, like, like people will see through this one. Or enough people will see through this. Because they. it seems like enough people saw through Venezuela and Syria uh, to stop it, right? So we didn't go to war in Syria. We, I mean, we did clandestine war, but not a you know, a stated war. And but that's war. But that, Jimmy, that's war. And when we do these, uh, the, the sanctions, that's war. Yes. Make no mistake about it. We're killing about 40,000 plus kids in Venezuela right today as we talk. And, and to kill that many people and say that that's not war is, is really burying your head in the sands. And we do the same thing. Uh, you, you recall what happened under Bill Clinton. We killed 500,000 kids and Madeleine Albright said, said it was well, worth that, it. That's, that's uh, what they call collateral damage. Nope. This is not. Fam, what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, Fee. What I'm talking right? Act of war. Yeah. And, and this is, this. nobody has staked their claim in this. If she says this, she separates herself completely from Donald Trump. No, I'm the real non interventionist. He still has sanctions. Madeleine Albright and Bill Clinton said it was okay to kill half a million children in Iraq with sanctions. We're doing it in Iran right now. We're going to kill poor people. And in Venezuela, we're killing almost 50,000 children every friggin' year by doing this shit. Do um, you have anything to say, yeah. Pam, before I play? Yeah. Um, so Tulsi is, I think it's very clear that she 
she is not like Donald Trump. The only the only people spinning that idea are the mainstream media trying to equate her to someone like him because she has garnered a lot of Republican and independent support precisely because of what she said. A lot of people who voted for Donald Trump thought he would be different, thought he would be a non-interventionist. That's how he campaigned in 2016. But he hasn't been that president because he has Pompeo and Bolton next to him. And even though he is the boss, like uh, he says, it's... He, he isn't the one pulling the strings here. He's he's the military industrial complex are the ones pulling the strings. He's uh, Netanyahu's puppet. He's Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's biatch. I mean, he's he's all of that. Yeah. And, and it's very clear that that he isn't the non-interventionist. Is he better than, say, Hillary Clinton would have been? Absolutely. As far as intervention goes, because yeah. that is. That is exactly what she would have done. I think they, she needs to make a deeper claim. She I agree. really needs to separate herself because Donald Trump, remember, we, we praised him for the Korea thing. Well, I praised him for the Korea thing. We also praised him for not attacking Iran. We praised him for not putting boots in the ground in Venezuela, really, even though they're stealing everything with their sanctions. Right. However, I think they has this mentality that, you know, a lot of people have said, too, if like, oh, if Hillary Clinton were president, we'd be at war with Russia. We would have already bombed Iran. And I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that mentality is kind of gaining ground where Trump is able to separate himself and look like a non-interventionist, even when people like Bill Maher are saying it, but it's not true. I think it's absolutely because true. of if, the sanctions. I agree. But I think if Hillary were president, I think we would be. A lot of people feel that way. Um, A hundred percent. Because of she was already eyeing that. And a lot of people say, well, no, she wouldn't have gotten out of the Iran nuclear deal. The Iran nuclear deal was there uh, to show, to say, oh, well, they violated this. So they violated the deal. I'm going to go to war. You can't, you know, you can't have an excuse to go to war if you don't have something being violated. Yeah. You you guys have to think outside of the scope here. Like, they, they, this is how these people are. This is how they think. They they want to go to war because it's money for them. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah. That's, it's money. Which the next big thing has been for Hillary Clinton and a lot of people on, on uh, Barack Obama released a, uh, there was an article, I think it was a Reuters, uh, that was released on July 1st or June 30th saying, oh, that the coup in Honduras is illegal. And it's bad. But meanwhile, they were pulling the strings behind closed doors to both of them. Uh, Obama allowing Hillary Clinton with her lobbyist uh, from the Clinton Foundation that have all money up in the UFC, the old UFC, which was United Fruit Company, with all these people to help them with the resource extraction. And then as soon as they ousted Zelaya, Hillary Clinton stood behind calling for new elections, which was bullshit. And they never they never quit the aid. They never stopped the aid. They allowed that coup to go in there, and they've never answered for it. Uh, I just want to say that when I answered my debate questions, I said there's three things that we need to do for when it came to Iran. Number one is we have to apologize for what we did and make sure we don't have it ever happen again. 1953, Mossadegh, the CIA, mm-hmm. removing them. Number two, I said we need to lift the sanctions right away. Number three, we need to get back into the Iranian deal. Let's look at a top analyst real quick. I think he watches the Convo Couch fam because look what he said. The United States uh, does not seem to be very much willing to talk to Tehran. Otherwise, they would have uh, kept the nuclear deal and built up on that. At least they could have uh, given it a, a try. But they've not done that. They have ruined the former deal. And this shows uh, after they reimpose sanctions to the harshest level possible, this shows that they are after Iran's surrender. If the United States removes the sanctions, gets back to the nuclear deal to show that it shows respect towards Iran in action, the case could be different. Until then, there couldn't be any kind of talks with the U.S., no matter who is in office. There you go. Fiorella, they got to remove the sanctions. Notice I said Fiorella. They got to remove the sanctions, Fiorella. If sanctions are an act of war. Nobody's saying that out there. Nobody. Nobody's saying, not just Tulsi, but nobody is saying that. It, it's some people, in fact, like Pete Buttigieg, did I say his name right? P, PDB, the mayor, has said that we have to target sanctions differently. We have to use a target saying, you're still going to hurt poor people. You're still going to deprive them of their food, water, and medication through these sanctions. This is ridiculous. Tulsi Gabbard, say it. Sanctions are an act of war. You will gain so many brownie points and you will lead, lead on this issue. Number two reason, the Americans, uh, Tulsi Gabbard needs to tie Americans' foreign policy in regards to regime change directly to immigration fam. Absolutely. Can we show a little picture? Because when me, Marianne Williamson said it at the debate, we were like high-fiving, and we wish that we would have a little bit more of that out of Bernie and Tulsi. Watch this. 
this on this stage. But we're going to talk about what to do about health care. Well, where have you been, guys? Because if it's it's not just a matter of a plan, and I haven't heard anybody on plan. this stage who's talked about American foreign policy in Latin America and how we might have in the last few decades contributed to something being more. Senator better. Gillibrand. Okay. What would Roaring you do applause. As president? Roaring applause, fam, and she's the only one who said some people have to ask the question, what about our foreign policy in Latin America as it ties to immigration? Absolutely. I think Tulsi and Bernie both need to make that that uh, tie because nobody has done it yet. And I she's started to do it. Marianne Williamson has. But Marianne Williamson doesn't have the, the uh, domestic policy background Bernie has. She doesn't have the foreign policy background Tulsi has. For her to say that is 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 to me it was awesome because she may not have all these the way to do it. She may not be like a presidential ready to be a presidential candidate, but she's saying something that is entirely true and that all of these people with all their accolades haven't been able to say or haven't wanted or had the bravery to say because it is something that I think the establishment will completely shut up yeah like they will never talk about that they'll talk about kids in cages all the time but they will not talk about why those kids are in those cages how these people with. got yeah. got there in the first place why they're coming here how we are entirely responsible for for having them there which makes me even more angry that we're putting these people in cages when we are the ones that led for them to flee their country and so if nobody's making that connection then then we're going to continue electing people who, who, who say that they're better than Trump when it comes to immigration, who are going to say, you know, we're going to free the kids, that we're going to do better, we're going to have a, a better system, yeah. but we're still going to go to war and bomb these people. It's going to be the same thing all over again. Prometheus X came in and said, Zionist, I have a question to our Convo Couch YouTube. Let me name a couple people real quick. Prometheus X, David Harris, Angela Creek, Trudy, Ed Moran, Michael Cruz, yeah, okay, buddy. Steve Woolbrand, thank you for joining <laughs> over here. That guy, Vale. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. Prometheus X, uh, Angela Creek is there, and I've also said that name about five times. I love you. <laughs> what percentage of our interventionist policies do you think leads to the immigration problem we have today? What percentage of, of our intervention of supporting regime change leads to the problem of mass migration today? I want to know that question. Fam, let's just talk to, because I want to show another clip real quick, and it's not that I want to rag on Bernie Sanders, but he was there. I thought he was building it up. I thought he was getting close there, but he can never cross the line and say the words. Check it out. Every damn thing on this issue that Trump has done. Absolutely. Number two, number two, picking up on the point that Joe made. We got to look at the root causes. And you have a situation where Honduras, among other things, is a failing state. Massive corruption. You got gangs who are telling families that if a 10-year-old does not join that gang, that family is going to be killed. What we have got to do on day one is invite the presidents and the leadership of Central America and Mexico together. This is a hemisphere Thank you. problem that we have got Congress to address. Congressman Swalwell. He was right there, fam. I thought he, he... He was right there. He was right. Yeah, he was right there. He, we do have to invite the presidents to have a conversation. He was right there. But he, he could have made that extra effort to tie... Uh, that to what happened in 2009 and the, not because he should rag on Hillary because or Obama because that's not going to go over well but because it, we need to make that connection we need to understand that we can't intervene anymore and he knows that yeah. Bernie Sanders are you kidding me he knows that yeah. he, he he's been constantly talking about that in the 1980s and with the Sandernistas and Absolutely. all of that like he's definitely aware of it he's not saying it for whatever reason he's being advised not to and I think that's an that's ill advisement whoever is advising him is advising him wrong because what we need now is for him to be that guy that is like no we're not going to do this look what happened in 2009 look what happened back in, in Nicaragua we need to do that we need to stay away we need to stay out of war we need to make that connection between domestic and foreign policy and Tulsi also needs to do that because yeah. a lot of people tell her how foreign, you're talking about foreign policy and you're not connecting it to your domestic policy and like she needs to yeah. make that connection we told her on this show you we and the thing was she did her homework before she came here because she knew we were going to talk about sanctions we mentioned it and she says well we need to find mechanisms and devices out there that have actual studies that show how many people these sanctions kill she knew it was up there she knew it was happening uh but she also was looking into how sanctions are and mike Ravel was able to to put that out and i think there's more media outlets now and more 
research centers, yeah. more colleges or that are doing studies on these sanctions. And we have to understand that sanctioning a country is awful. We have 74 people over on the Convo Couch YouTube fam. Uh, and most of the people were said 100%, 100%, 100%. That guy Val said 90 to 100%. And there were a couple of people like Avalon19 who said 60%. Uh, we know uh how you guys feel thank you so much on the mcsc network they're up to 90 don't get caught mcsc network combo couch youtube has got 74 we're catching up to your butt over there <laughs> uh and if you got some time go over there and scribe share so fam we got the sophiarella freaking a god so <laughs> man i'm sorry out there for anyway i've been over my fam allotment so now fam we know that Number one, we said that she has to talk about sanctions as an act of war and tell mm -hmm. us to lift the sanctions. Number two, she has to, to tie directly our foreign policy to the immigration issue we have. Number three, fam, and I think you might like this one. Son of a bitch. The global warming and criminal justice reform. Tie it directly to the, to the legalization and reproduction of marijuana, fam. This is big. Nobody's doing this. I think that they need to do this. Hey, listen, let me say this to you guys, not just because I'm an advocate. I'm going to say it loud and clear. Marijuana could save the world. Marijuana could save the planet. Marijuana could <laughs> stop, can, can, can help. Damn it hippie. To, it could happen. Listen, if we were able to just reproduce toilet paper for marijuana, mm. how many trees would not be cut down? If we could take all our bags, all our cloth, hemp grows like a weed. How much cotton and lumber would we save? The Amazon that's being pillaged, mm, being pillaged say, right yeah. now, could screw up the whole freaking ecosystem. Marijuana could save that. And not only that, fam, how many, and ask Kamala Harris this, how many black and brown people have been locked up for marijuana in California? Yeah, ask Kamala Harris. So we legalize it. And Tulsi has a bill out there that's very, very popular. Mm -hmm. She's got to make the connection. Hey, global warming is one of the biggest threats we have. Marijuana could save us. Toilet paper alone. I keep on saying toilet paper alone can save us. You know what I'm saying? So I think that she has to make this big connection. And take a look. Johnny's putting it up. Some of the stands. I love that picture of her with a weed plant right next to it. I love you, Tulsi. You look good there with that green on you. Um, we must study <laughs> marijuana's impact on the environment before it's late. There's been multiple studies about this right now. Fam, this is an alien plant. It was put here to save us. <laughs> Okay, okay, now you're getting really Adam, uh, Alan Watts on me. We are getting Alan Watts. I'm getting a little Joe <laughs> Rogan, too, because Joe Rogan talked about it being an alien plant. It's an alien plant. There's so many things Love we Alan can do Watts with it. But, but, but we have to go back to figure out why it's legal. When we talk about Anslinger and when the DAA was, conform, con, uh, you know, was formed, all these other lobbyists, the alcohol lobbyists, the cotton lumber lobbyists, they were out there lobbying against this, and they've still held the handcuffs. Pharmaceutical companies, too. Oh, yeah. They're Monsanto all... is trying to get their hands on marijuana so they can make it into a pill form and use it that way. I mean, this isn't this isn't a joke. Uh, I think it's not just the connection to marijuana and the criminal justice system and also helping our environment. It's the fact that we need to invest in new technologies and new work industries that are going to allow us to transition from being the having the workforce in big oil to having a workforce, let's say, in the hemp industry or yeah. in, in, in green tech, in, so, in solar industry. Like, that's why we have this problem now where we have a lot of the labor unions supporting big oil because th they're getting paid that way. These people are earning a living that way. You can't just take their job and expect them to live off of nothing. We have to have a way to transition into that, which is why Tulsi's uh, Off Fossil Fuels Act is really great because it bans fracking, which the Green New Deal doesn't do. But I, I think in coalition, those two are the way to actually get this whole thing to happen. It includes everything. It includes everything. Everything is connected. We are always here trying to make the connections between how everything uh, it affects the other. So, Okay. Um, fam, it's all connected. And we're not married. Uh, uh, Skull Death 23 said Pasta's alien. Pasta's single. Pasta really? is, is ready to mingle. Dave Alberts, Christian K. Holla at Gabriel, your boy. Gabriel. <laughs> Holla at your boy. Uh, I'm looking for a, uh, uh, to be a stay-at-home dad. So if there's a strong businesswoman out there making a lot of money and she wants a clean house <laughs> and dinner on the table. And Are you a, looking for a sugar mama? I am not looking for a sugar mom. I'm just okay. looking for a woman to take care of the bills and I will take care of the house. Oh, I'll yeah, cook and clean all day, Fiorella. Clean. I'll clean. I'll, yeah. You know what? I'll iron the clothes. Bubble bath will be drawn. I'll have plenty of strength in my hands for a massage to put Insert you to sleep. Insert personal Tinder ad right for Paul there, Sorry. Right here. 
looking for that. Uh, so we have 78 people watching on the Convo Couch YouTube. We want to thank you for coming over and joining. We've been growing as of late because uh, we've been covering some awesome stuff, Fiorella. Yes. We've been covering the KDEM convention when we went up there. Great teamwork. Mm -hmm. Videos put out by Johnny Tsunami. Tulsi Time. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Play it, share it. Uh, we also got an interview with Ben Cohen over there. That's really fun. Norman Solomon. There's a lot of great stuff. But then we followed up, fam, and we covered the debates. Mm -hmm. We covered the debates. You all watched. You helped us out. You got us a lot of views uh, and a lot of new people. And that's why we've been doing extra shows, spending extra time and attention. If you can help us out on our Patreon, please do so. Because yeah. me and Fiorella and Johnny, we're taking a lot more time off work to work on this. So any dollar that you give us, Remember, the Convo Couch puts it back into play by coming out there with the news, interviewing, covering stuff. We make your money go to work for real. We don't just burn it up. So help us out if you can. Uh, there are 77 people watching on the Convo Couch YouTube. Sweet. Uh, David Harris, Michael Cruz, Ocean Straight Transistor. Thank you so much. On the Facebook, we have about uh, Steve Wilbrandt. At least he's watching. <laughs> my, my, It's cutting off there. 91 people watching. Uh, Skullduth23, Alien, really, I say it again, yes. Alan David's there as well. Um, Fiorella, we got anything else we want to talk about? Uh, no, I was just going to say we are going to be doing little videos on the Patreon that only Patreons can look at, and they're going to be special videos. Yeah. So, uh, Personal, yeah. behind the scenes. Exactly. Right? So if you guys do that, then, you know, any amount helps out. Yeah. We really do use it for the show we really do try to go every day get as much information as possible if we could do this full time 100 yeah. percent, that would be help ideal. us get there help yeah, us get there you, you're there. a big part of it and you know it's awesome because you know the the mainstream media they are they they are sponsored by all the big businesses so the information they're going to give you is going to be uh first of all it's going to be what's the word i'm looking for mind controlling of sorts or it's it's a bubble. biased narrative it's a biased yeah. narrative to keep you in a bubble to to, to make you an obedient soldier uh, mm -hmm. We're going to give you the news behind the news and, and tell you what's really, really happening. A lot of people aren't talking about what's going on in, in uh, Queens with Caban. We are. No. Or they're talking about it as it's a given that uh, cats won and, you know, oh, yeah. anything questioning that is a conspiracy. And that's ridiculous. Don't let people tell you that you questioning the government is a conspiracy. I'm sick and tired of that. And I will fight against that narrative because that is the narrative that they're going to use to dismiss the fact that we are figuring things out. And the government is now blatantly doing this. I mean, it's blatant what they're doing. And e throughout all of this demise, all of all of the things that we are seeing fall apart, there is a light because we are seeing that th the truth is pretty much coming out as, as hurtful and ugly as it can be. The truth is out. And at least in that sense, we are becoming more free. We are becoming more aware of how things really are. And we wouldn't have gotten that without, you know, Donald Trump. And ugh, I hate myself, but I'll have to thank him. For that i'll have to thank him for for being that you know what exposed everything else yeah well so. i think that's it for today for you Rella. i gotta add um oh you got something there's uh johnny sue from the from the bleaches <laughs> what's up well here he is <laughs> why are you blue <laughs> he's skeletor go ahead <laughs> i just want to add that there was a lot of talk about uh the honduras uh and you know the regime change we've done there mm -hmm. and that we made a fantastic video on that uh and you can you guys could, should look for it. it. This is what it looks like. It's why the U.S. participates in regime change wars. Yep. It's only six minutes. I think it should have more views than 200. Um, yeah. So you guys go watch that. And then we also were talking about our interview with Tulsi, and there's that's where that is. That's just a quick 30-minute video. If you haven't seen it yet, go check that out. Uh,